Hello, and thank you very much for finding your way to this video in which I'm going to be guiding you through some of the classics of children up until adults literature, roughly divided up into reading age and classic um, selections for each of these um, age groups, all the way from ages seven up to 16. A couple of notes on that. Firstly, what is suitable for one child to be reading at the age of seven will not be appropriate for another child. So it's about finding things that is just out of the comfort zone of your child while still making sure that the material is um, thoroughly enjoyable and engaging. The important thing here is that children learn to love reading. So we've got to be make making sure they are reading things that they enjoy. Classics are established as, well, these are established as some of the best um, works of literature um, for young readers and old alike. And generations sometimes of readers have enjoyed some of these books. Some of them are more modern, for example, Harry Potter, but the sheer volume of people who have read that uh, series establishes it as a classic. Now, a lot of people uh, watching this video will not be native speakers of English. However, I feel that this list is still important um, for you because if, you're, if the target culture is the English, American culture, then we've got to be looking at reading within that culture. Now, typically, students who come from foreign countries and come into the uh, British education system, um, make progress at a much faster rate than students who have always been um, in the UK because they know they have to work that much harder. So if you as parents of um, children who are new to the British or American system, can, can encourage your child with reading, then that will make a difference. Um, but they're getting a little bit of help and support with their English from home. Um, so I think that's probably all I need to say to introduce this video. Um, now, the the age recommendations are are quite loose. Okay, so you know, roughly speaking, we're, we're going from young through to uh, 15, 16. Um, but please don't take it as read. Please don't just say, oh, right, my child's seven, so they have to read this. My child's nine, so they have to read this. It's a rough guideline. Have a look at the book. Is your child going to enjoy it? That's the main question. So, uh, Winnie the Pooh, is definitely has a very strong place in the children's literary heritage of uh, the UK. Um, this delightful bear who always has his paw in the jar of honey and uh, rue, um, the um, very sweet but um, terrified little friend and bouncing tigger full of energy. So, um, Yes, this, this is just a, you know, um, a very sort of warm series of stories that can stay with, with one for, for one's whole life. Um, I think my grandmother actually asked to have Winnie the Pooh read to her in her sort of dying days. So it can, these books can, can stay with you your whole life. Um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Roald Dahl, um, the king of incredible imagination um, when it comes to children's literature. Um, also made into a film with Johnny Depp. So, but I always think it's best to try and read things before you watch the film. That way when you're reading, your imagination is creating these pictures rather than getting the pictures from the film and applying it to the book. You're doing the imaginative work. Um, Charlotte's Web, 
uh, lovely story. I think it's, it's a long time ago since I read this. Uh, I think there's a pig, obviously a spider, um, but it's a very touching, um, you know, heartfelt story about um, animals. Harry Potter, wizardry and um, excitement and twist plots and characters. Um, if you can get your child into Harry Potter, they're going to want to read the whole series. Um, not a bad way for them to spend some time. 101 Dalmatians. Um, you know, a lot of, lo lots of these stories feature animals and kind of encourage a, a healthy respect and love of animals. The Railway Children, um, a little bit dated now, some would say, um, but a fantastic story nonetheless. The Hobbit, the precursor to the Lord of the Rings trilogy, um, J.R.R. R. Tolkien, um, you know, definitely worth reading if um, you're interested in sort of, you know, other worlds and kind of fantasy and myth. The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis, um, a book of different dimensions. And actually, if you read at a deep level, there is a lot of symbolism and um, a lot of meaning that you can take from that story. Some wonderful quotes, um, you know, that are worth writing down. Watership Down, a rather tragic tale about rabbits that will make you think twice about having rabbit stew. Um, you know, a very emotional story, that one. Peter Pan, a tale full of like bright-eyed adventure. Um, and these fairies Tinkerbell and Peter Pan. Um, I've got a friend who thinks he's a bit like Peter Pan, full of magic and, you know, very special energy. The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank, um, a Second World War story, true story, written by a girl who was in hiding in Amsterdam from Nazi soldiers. Um, very moving story. War Horse by Michael Morpurgo. Again, set in war, this time the First World War. Um, it was set down where I come from in Devon in the southwest of the UK. And the central character, Joey, and how he has this incredibly strong uh, relationship with his horse, um, which sees them through the war. Uh, it's now been turned into a play and a um, Hollywood blockbuster as well. Again, try and read it first. Black Beauty by Anna Sewell. Again, um, on that horse theme. Um, if, if your child's into horses or even if they're not, again, it, it's uh, quite a poignant story. This is more comedy. The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole, age 13 and three quarters. When anyone ever says to me the name Pandora, I will also always think of this infatuated um, teenager, Adrian Mole, who uh, develops a bit of a crush on a girl in his class. Very amusing um, take on sort of the transition into teenage adolescent years. <clears throat> The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. This is kind of a, a look at how how childhood could be, sort of, that's maybe now quite difficult for us in our um, fear-driven society where children are playing less outside. But this uh, looks back at a day and an age where children were outside all the time and getting up to all sorts of adventures. The Call of the Wild by Jack London. Um, again, another really strong um, story set in nature with wolves up in North America. Um, some of my friends really enjoyed this book. Okay, moving on now, we're looking through to uh, 12 years on.
here we have some absolute classics of literature. Animal Farm by George Orwell. It's a political allegory. What that means is that on the surface we have a tale about some pigs on a farm, but there's a deeper symbolism behind the story, which is an exploration of the political systems of capitalism and socialism. Very entertaining read and it's not too long either. Curious incident of the dog in the night time, um, just as I get into a bit of a tangle down here. Um, this is a story from the perspective of an autistic boy and uh, it's just wonderful how to, to get an insight into the workings of his mind and every chapter, title, um, has to be a prime number um, and it was successfully adapted into a West End play. Um, so very enjoyable read, Curious Incident. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy comic science fiction. Uh, we should really have a capital G here and a capital G here. So if you enjoy thinking about the, the nature of our existence and what might be out there then this is a really, really entertaining and thought-provoking read. More mystery here. Be the detective in mysterious Dartmoor as you try to work out the mystery behind the Hound of the Baskervilles. Lord of the Flies by William Golding. This looks at how children um, sort of organise themselves in a group dynamic when they are away from the guiding influences of authority, um, the fittest survive and how do they look after the weaker ones. Find out in Lord of the Flies. 1984, from this book um, came ideas such as Big Brother. Um, it explored, written uh, about 50 years ago now, it explored the idea of a, a totalitarian state that was always um, observing individuals and controlling their every move. Uh, a very um, hard-hitting and thought-provoking book. Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, this take yourself off um, on the high seas on this frolicking adventure in search of treasure. Now it's often said that we only live one life but through the books we read we can live several more. So I wouldn't mind going off to sea. Um, go there in your imagination in Treasure Island. Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. Um, very interesting um, story written the, in the context of the Great Depression in America. Two quite vulnerable, lonely men uh, trying to make ends meet by going around and working on different farms, but it all ends rather tragically. Studied as a GCSE text in the UK. Um, again, not too long a read, but if you're into find, reading about America, then a uh, good book for you. Dracula by Bram Stoker. Lovers of dark and gothic worlds um, will enjoy this. The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway takes one small, uh, well not small, one episode and turns it into uh, a huge novel as the fishman is um, battling his way in, in a sort of will, a battle of wills with uh, the very, very big fish. Um, a gripping read. To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Again, it's been studied as a GCSE text in the UK. To Kill a Mockingbird, uh, so much to say about this book, um, explores uh, themes of racism, innocence, um, childhood going into adulthood, beautifully written book, um, a lot of imagery and language to explore in To Kill a Mockingbird. Okay, now looking at the 15 to 16, 14 to 16 
um, age bracket. So all of these stories here and all of these novels here are appropriate for adult readers as well and they were written for adults but to really encourage your child or if you are a student to develop your um, love and understanding of literature I'm recommending them for this age group. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley was wrote, written by Shelley whilst on holiday in the Alps. They were having, this is before the age of the iPhone and Spotify, they created their entertainment. They were sitting around and they had to come up, well, they're having a, a storytelling competition. Who could tell the most terrifying tale? That's what she came up with. Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte uh, has some very, very memorable characters, the wild um, Heathcliff, and it's uh, a very sort of evocative atmosphere up in um, Yorkshire. Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. Um, you go on a huge journey um, in this story, starting in the marshes down in Kent, and um, you follow this boy, Pip, his uh, journey through, through life. Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Last night I dreamt of Mand... Last night I dreamt I went to Mandalay again. Um, set down in Cornwall uh, and in Monte Carlo. This is um, an absolute classic of literature and I heartily recommend it. John Steinbeck's Grapes of Wrath. Again, exploring the um, Great Depression in America and one family's journey out to California. Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. If you're into, uh, you know, very intricate plots and trying to work out exactly what's happened and um, this is probably the finest work of uh, more than spy detective thriller writing um, by John le Carre. Sided with Rosie by Laurie Lee, set in the Cotswolds in 1962. Looks at a couple's fateful wedding night. Um, and onwards, Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. Um, a curious central character, a bit of a drifter. Um, it looks, it's one of those stories that sort of focuses on a very short time span and expands it into uh, tremendous detail. It looks at this boy who leaves school, he's quite unhappy and he kind of, um, I won't spoil the plot, but um, you, you really sort of understand for this character and uh, it's, you know, you go on a journey with him, as you go on a journey with all these characters. Remain to the Day by Kasuo Ishiguro. Um, this is set in England and it looks at, it's kind of, well, it's, it's written about this um, butler and as he's sort of driving through England, it's um, kind of a memory of things gone past, things gone by. Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. Um, a wonderful work of satire. So he's pointing fun, he's ridiculing uh, various things that were happening at the time and exploring them in this uh, wonderfully imagined world. Um, Gulliver goes off and is in sort of lands of giants and lands of um, tiny people and every detail is, um, is kind of commenting on the society that Jonathan Swift was living in at the time. Um, you understand a lot about the human condition from reading this book. The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. Um, this is called a frame narrative, so it's like a story within a story. Um, quite short, um, so science fiction and this book kind of developed, well, was the first time that the idea of time travel had been discussed. The Kite Runner by Khaled Husseini, um, set in Afghanistan and the um, contrasting fortunes of, of two boys um, who kind of grow up together but grow apart. 
um, when in, in the time of the Taliban. Um, been made into a play and a film, and I had a friend who was in the West End cast of this. Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, um, sort of period comedy, an absolute classic, hence being in this list. Um, the Bennett's Five Daughters and What Happens When Mr. Darcy Arrives in Town. Don Quixote, translated from the Spanish, um, really quite a hefty book, um, but wonderfully um, amazing, um, for want of better words. So you've got this crazy old duke who just reads and reads, not duke, a sort of um, member of the aristocracy, and he reads and reads and reads and reads and reads, and then decides that he is a knight errant who's going to save the world and persuades um, a guy basically from the local pub to come off with him and go away with him and off they go to go and save the world. Um, so that draws us to a conclusion. Um, it's been uh, quite a task talking to you about all of these books. There's so much depth, um, so much to be gained from, from reading these books. Um, and I hope the habit of reading lasts you a lifetime. If this is the first time watching my channel, uh, this is predominantly a channel for people learning English as a foreign language. But if you're a native speaker, welcome. Thanks for watching this and uh, please do subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Bye.